Hello, everybody. My name is Marika DeRoos. I am the Communications Coordinator with Heritage Saskatchewan. And uh, since our 2020 Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan Heritage Awards have been cancelled due to COVID-19, we've been catching up with past winners. And today I'm joined by Thomason Playford, the Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Archaeological Society. In 2019, her organization was awarded in the public outreach category for the Trappers and Traders a Fur Trade Card Game. Thank you for joining us, Thomason. Oh, really happy to be here. Great. Uh, can you start by describing the game? Oh, for sure. So the game is a, it's a pretty simple concept. It's a card trading game. And there's about, there's 21 cards for four different groups. And those four groups are First Nations, Métis, the Hudson Bay Company, and the Northwest Company. And on each card is an item that the groups start with that they have to trade with. And then they also have a list of items that they have to trade for. And so the game is really about kind of bringing to life what these different groups would have been trading, you know, over the last few hundred years in Saskatchewan. So it's, it's a pretty simple concept, but a pretty fun game. Really cool. Uh, since winning the 2019 award, uh, can you give us an update about the game? Do you continue to use it in your program and sell it online? Yep, no, that's a great question. Yes, we sell it online and we still have copies available. So people are encouraged to go to our online bookstore, The Den of Antiquity, and purchase the game. It's been a little bit more difficult to use it in our programming because of COVID-19. Uh, before COVID, we were certainly keeping it in our regular outreach programming. So when we go to schools, we'll often play the game. Or when we have something like a field school, it's a great opportunity, especially if we're at a fur trade post to play the game. Um, so yes, we definitely continue to use it in our outreach and our programming. Just the COVID-19 pandemic has put a little bit of a dent in that. No doubt. Uh, we'll be sure to link um, to your online store as well. Perfect, and, yeah. Um, great. Uh, so what originally motivated your organization to create the game? So this was a very grassroots or organic experience. Essentially, we do a public field school every year and we had integrated a school component into our public field school back in like 2007 or 2008. And the executive director at the time and one of the summer students were really trying to find a way to help the kids connect between the arc artifacts that they were finding and the people that made them in the past and so they just they came up with this idea of developing this this trading game where it would represent these four different groups that were at this post at that time and the material culture so the things that those people were trading with and so that's really how the game came about um, and initially the first for, for the first several years, it was literally clip art images on construction paper that we had like self laminated in our office. And, and so it was, you know, it was very homemade experience, you could say, and we had teachers, the thing was teachers kept asking us where they could get the game. So we thought, okay, well, we'll put the instructions up online and you know, they can make their own game, but they didn't, they really, they, they that wasn't what they wanted. They didn't want to, it does take about a day to make the game yourself. And so we really started thinking about making a product that people could purchase that would be easy for them to access and that we could, you know, get across Saskatchewan. So that's kind of where the idea to produce the game came from. Amazing. And um, why do you think it's important for kids to play this game? What, what do they get out of it? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. Uh, I, I do say this, it's fun. Kids, I'm, I'm just always amazed when I see kids play it, how much fun they have playing it. And so, I mean, that's the best way to learn, right, is to have fun. And the game can be different. So once you play it once, you can, then you have a concept of how the game works. So then consecutive plays of the game is a, is a different game. So it stays fun for the kids too. But it's also, it helps teach the kids about archaeology. So there's kind of that basic learning of, you know, connecting the material culture to different groups, because that's what archaeology is about. A lot of people think archaeology is about finding treasure, uh, digging up artifacts, and, and we do excavate items, but it's not about the item itself. It's not about the arrowhead or the, the beads that are found. It's really about what those items say 
Who are the people who made them? How did they make them? How did they use them? When were they making them? And so it's connecting, especially for younger children, that material culture or stuff to a specific group. And that's what's one of the beauties about this game is because we've identified the four different groups, First Nations, Métis, Hudson Bay Company and Northwest Company, and the cards, the items on the cards represent the material culture of those different groups. You can easily see how material culture can be used to interpret um, living culture. So that's one of, one of a really good um, learning tool of the game. But then the game also can be used, especially once you play it with older students as a catalyst for discussions. So then you can start talking about, well, what were the worldviews of the indigenous people um, versus the traders? Uh, what were the values of these different worldview systems? How did the fur trade impact these different groups? Um, how did the relationship between the fur traders and the indigenous people change when markets changed and you can use the game that way so one of the tricks is you have a variation of the game or you can take away all the bison um, cards because oh well the bison are starting to disappear you no longer have that resource how does that impact the game so so it's it's really that catalyst for those kind of conversations about colonization, worldview, um, indigenous crown relationship treaties, etc. And we have a lot of that information available in our teacher's guide that's on our website as a free download. So great. I'll link link to that as well. Amazing. So um, you touched on a lot of the points related to my next question, uh, which is great. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what in what way does the game impart living heritage? That's a great question because uh, as archaeologists, we often get stuck in the tangible world, right? We often get uh, connected to the artifacts and to the things. And so what the game does is it transmits living heritage in a couple of ways. It, first of all, it turns those static objects or artifacts of the past and it brings them to life. So when we're looking at some of the items that we might find at a fur trade post, some of those things we wouldn't find today. So something like a musket ball, we wouldn't necessarily find that out in the world today. So it kind of brings that to life. Uh, it shows how those objects were made, how they were used, they were traded, and how some of the people who did that uh, here in Saskatchewan have descendants living here today. Uh, so, yeah, and it also shows that some of the items from, you know, two or three hundred years, two or three hundred years ago are still being made and used today. They're still with us. So it also shows how, you know, culture is is living and continues. It's it's not just the past, but it's also who we are today. Right. And then one of the, yeah, the living heritage. Yeah. And then a big part of our game was actually a language component. So each trading card includes the Cree, the Michif, the French, and the English word for that item. And just a little sidebar, we had a lot of discussion about this because when we were producing the game, we weren't sure whether we should include what the item was on the card. Because we thought, well, should it be part of the game that the kids or whoever's playing it has to figure that out? And so there is a lot of back and forth on that. And it really is the youth who will lead the way because it was a summer student who we had working with us who just said, well, you have four sides to a card and you have four groups. Why don't you just put all the languages on? So it was just like this big aha moment of, of course, that makes so much sense. Um, so yes. So the language really is helpful because it shows, you know, it, the cards can then also be used for language learning, but it shows that there's a diversity of cultures. Um, and that helps promote kind of awareness and respect. If you lived here two, three hundred years ago and you only spoke English, you wouldn't get very far because you needed to know Indigenous languages, uh, French, you know, Machif. So that kind of promotes that respect and awareness. And it's also important because language connects to identity. So having the language on the card with the material culture just strengthens that connection. And of course, 2019 was the year of indigenous languages and under UNDRIP, uh, language is a right of indigenous people. So it's also a way to help, you know, preserve and facilitate language learning with indigenous cultures. 
and, and everybody. Yeah. 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 Incredible. Powerful. It's fantastic. Uh, what are your plans for the game going forward? So what we would like to do is we did get the game translated into French. Uh, so the, each card has the four languages, but there's also the score pads and the instructions. And so we have the score pads and the instructions in French again, free download on our website. It's about getting the information out there. We're like, very, very close. We're a few words away from having the Cree and the Michif also translated for the score pad. So that's kind of our next thing is getting those up on the website so people could play the entire game in one of the four languages. Um, and other than that, we don't have, we still have quite a few copies for sale. So we're not looking at another print run or anything, but we're always open to new ideas for our teacher's guide because it's a free download on the website. We can update it. So we're always looking for feedback from educators or people who found a new way to use the game or have some good ideas. So that's our, our other next step that we would do is an update to the teacher's guide. Great, fantastic. Well, in the meantime, I'll be sure to link to the teacher's guide and uh, link to your, your online store. Um, I can't wait to get the game for my kids in their classrooms. Awesome. Um, and I really appreciate the update, Thomas, and it was so great to catch up. No problem. We are very proud to have, to have won the Heritage Saskatchewan Award. So thank you very much for having us. Amazing. Thank you again.